So I uh, want to welcome everyone to the hearing of the Clean Air and, and Nuclear Safety Subcommittee. Uh, and the hearing is entitled The Impacts of EPA's Proposed Carbon Regulations on Energy Costs for American Businesses, Rural Communities, and Families, and a legislative hearing on my bill, S-1324, which is better known as the ARENA Act, Affordable Reliable Electricity Now Act. I introduced ARENA in May, and I'm proud to have more than 30 co-sponsors, including Leader McConnell, Chairman Inhofe, and all of my fellow EPW Republicans. I introduced ARENA and I'm holding this hearing today because of the devastating impact that EPA's, EPA's proposed regulations will have on the families and businesses my home state of West Virginia and across the nation. I am not exaggerating when I say almost every day back home in West Virginia there are news stories detailing closed plants, job loss, and price increases. I have a letter here today sent to me by AMARS Incorporated, which is a family-owned company that operates 19 Magic Mart stores in West Virginia, Virginia, and Eastern Kentucky. The letter is accompanied by a petition signed by 26,000 Ma Magic Mart customers calling on EPA to end its war on coal and catastrophic impact on local economies. AMARS Incorporated has been active in the region for 95 years. And according to this letter, the present economic crunch is the most difficult challenge this company has faced. Let me quote directly, quote, there was a time when your greatest obstacle was your competitor, but if you worked hard, took care of your customers, and offered quality merchandise at a fair price, you could compete successfully. Unfortunately, that is not the case now. The largest impediment we have now operating our business successfully is our own government, particularly the EPA. The rulings issued by the EPA have de devastated our, our regional economy. Coal provides 96% of West Virginia's electricity last year, and West Virginia had among the lowest electricity prices in the nation. The average price was 27% below the national average. But that advantage will not survive this administration's policies. Studies have projected that our electricity prices will rise from 12 to 16%. Earlier this month, 450,000 West Virginians learned of a 16% increase in the cost of electricity. While there are multiple factors that contributed to this, compliance with EPA regulations played a significant part. If we allow these plans to move forward, last week's rate increase will only be the tip of the iceberg. Affordable energy matters. The 430,000 low and middle income families in West Virginia, which is nearly 60% of our state's household, take home an average of less than $1,900 a month and spend 17% of their after-tax income on energy. These families are especially vulnerable to the price increases that result from the Clean Power Plan. But this isn't just about the impacts on coal-producing states like West Virginia. This is about Im impacts across the country. It's important to note that all electricity has to come from somewhere. In many states, odds are that it is being imported from a state that relies on coal. But no one is talking about that. We'll we're going to learn uh, in some, some of the panelists' testimony uh, from uh, Reggie, which is the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. One of the witnesses we'll hear from today, Mr. Martins, and thank you for coming, is affiliated with REGI, a program of nine northeastern states that uses market principles to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the power sector. Mr. Martins, Mr. Martins may not mention that REGI's nine states consume five times more energy than they produce. And my little state of West Virginia produces twice as much energy as all of the nine states in REGI combined. There are energy producing states and there are energy consuming states. Only 13 states produce more energy than they consume. West Virginia ranks second and Wyoming ranks first. And for the 10 of the 13 states that export energy, coal is critical to have a net positive result. Put simply, there is no way that this massive, largely EPA driven reduction in coal fired electricity gener generation is going to impact only coal states. It is going to impact the majority of states, the families and the businesses within them. Often the poorest and most vulnerable of our populations will bear the brunt. I look forward to hearing in greater detail from our witnesses about these impacts and the need for clean air policies that don't overburden our states and cripple our economy.